Welcome to my continuing discussion on deferred tax assets. Our discussion today is on the valuation allowance account. Our goal today is to learn how to adjust any balance in a deferred tax asset account down to the balance that you might expect to realize in actuality. As we start this discussion, I want you to note You've done this many times. We've often used an allowance account to adjust an asset down to the amount you expect to realize. It's not a new concept. I'll give you two examples. In the past, we've had accounts receivable where we have set up an allowance for doubtful accounts to adjust it down to what we called its net realizable value, the amount we expected to collect accounts receivable were 100, and when we only expected to collect 98, we would have an allowance account set up in the amount of 2. We did it with inventory, too. If your inventory's cost, say, was 20, but its market value was only 18, we used an allowance for a lower of cost or market a LCM account to adjust that inventory down to the amount we expected it to be worth. Accounting for deferred tax asset is exactly along these lines. An example might be as follows. Let's say you have a deferred tax asset set up on your books in the amount of $40. But you're uncertain as to whether you'll ever be around long enough to realize that 40. That's assuming you have enough income to reverse that out against. Maybe that deferred tax asset was set up as a result of a net operating loss carryback. And there's some real uncertainty that you'll ever be around to collect it. And let's say further that you think that there's a chance that more likely than not, you'll be around to realize only 30 of that, and that you'll probably, in all reality, be out of business before you ever recognize 40. The deferred tax at account is at 40, and you believe you'll be around long enough to recognize only 30 of it, you need to set up an allowance for the other 10. What might that entry look like? How about you increase your tax expense for the period for 10 and set allowance up for the deferred tax allowance account in the amount of 10? And at the end of it, you'll have two accounts that relate to your deferred tax asset. Deferred tax asset allowance account to reduce it to its realizable value, you'll have increased your tax expense because you don't believe you'll ever be around to recognize all of that. You set this up, and when it's shown on the balance sheet, you'll have a deferred tax asset with the amount of 40, an allowance account set up in the amount of 10, and it will show it the net realizable value of 30. We've used the term, how much you expect to realize, and the threshold is more likely than not. In our example, we said it was more likely than not that you would not have enough future income to reverse that whole 40 against. It was likely you would only have enough future income to recognize 30, and so we wrote it down. That's a 50% threshold that we're talking about there. Deferred tax allowance account um, is set up because you don't think that you'll have enough income to ever realize that tax benefit. It doesn't speak highly of going concern, does it? Thanks for joining me on this topic of the deferred tax valuation allowance account.